I basically had a dreadlock forming rock hard and leaking all the time. Like I had two faucets on my chest. I felt like I wanted to run away, but when I say, and when all mothers say that it's worth it, it is absolutely true. So just imagine how much you love your baby if all of this is truly worth it. Hello everyone. I was planning for this video to be my first video back filming, but I wanted to get past the first few really difficult months of being a new mother before I filmed this video so that it was not all just doom and gloom. I was honestly struggling to enjoy motherhood in the beginning for reasons I'll get into in this video, but my baby is now three and a half months old and it is so much more enjoyable being a mother now than it was in the very beginning and even though motherhood is wonderful overall I feel this urge to warn expectant mothers or women who want to be mothers one day of certain things not at all to discourage anyone from becoming mothers because it is it is truly worth it but to hopefully help ease you into what to expect from early motherhood because when I was pregnant, I spent all my time researching how to give birth and I utterly neglected learning about what to do after the baby comes, when the hard part actually begins. I really hope this video does not come across as negative, but I think it's important to discuss the really difficult parts of motherhood, the parts that mothers feel like they shouldn't talk about and fear that people will think they're a bad mother. But if we don't talk about these difficult topics, it makes us feel even more isolated and like these experiences are only unique to us, which makes us feel like freaks. But if new mothers know that their difficult experiences are ubiquitously experienced by almost every new mother, then we feel a lot more comforted, less alone, and less freakish. And perhaps we may even feel like we're doing an okay job. Please do like and subscribe for more content from me. And if you want a comprehensive video of everything we bought and actually used for my baby, then please let me know. So first off, being a new mother is incredibly challenging. And I know that's not a revelational thing to say, but I was so naive to how difficult it is. It is not a full-time job. It is way more than a full-time job. It's a 24 seven job. Does not matter if you're sick or exhausted, you need to mother. And birth, which is basically the, you know, the initiation into motherhood, I guess, while it is insanely difficult, it was honestly nothing compared to the postpartum period for me and figuring out breastfeeding. I'd rather give birth again than go through the first six weeks of postpartum again. Within the first three days postpartum, I basically had a mental breakdown or a nervous breakdown because well, I'll just paint you the picture. I was so hungry, but I did not want to take the time to eat because I just wanted to sleep, but I couldn't sleep because I was hungry. But when I was eating, I felt like I was wasting time I could have spent trying to sleep. So I was in this hopelessly hungry and hopelessly tired spiral. I also didn't want to sleep because I was afraid something would happen to the baby if I was not watching her the entire time. My breasts were rock hard like bricks and throbbing due to my milk coming in. My nipples were even more painful due to latching issues and I was leaking so much milk I was basically constantly soaking wet even soaking through towels and I constantly smelled like dried breast milk and constantly being soaking wet made sleeping even more difficult all of that basically made me hate my breasts which sucked initially lactating felt almost like a disability because of how much it affected my life my sleep my mental health it felt like they only existed to hurt me due to engorgement, nipple pain, clogged ducts, blebs, mastitis, leaking. I, yeah, breastfeeding. I'm gonna get more into breastfeeding in another part of this video, but way more difficult than I thought. I was also in horrible pain from giving birth, but I felt guilty taking painkillers because it was going to get through to the breast milk. My body image was in the gutter because I noticed new stretch marks. My dark circles were visible from miles away. None of my clothes fit. My skin was dry due to not 
having energy for skincare and I had trouble with incontinence. I was bleeding a lot and moving around made my bleeding worse, but if I wasn't productive doing things like practicing piano, doing laundry, going on walks, I felt even worse and I and like I was just a human pacifier because I didn't understand that just taking care of my baby was as productive as I needed to be. My husband and I hadn't really connected in days because I was so touched out and felt so unattractive, so I felt like a horrible wife. I had a really hard time connecting to my baby with all the stress and the sleep deprivation, so at times I felt like I was taking care of her out of obligation instead of love. There were times when I had gotten up for the fifth time in the middle of the night to take care of her. Uh, my patience was just completely gone. I was tapped out and I, and I could not take it anymore and I was worried I would literally throw myself out the window and I would have to ask for someone else to take care of her for my own sanity. When you're that exhausted, you forget about love, you forget about obligation and responsibility. All you want in the whole entire world, more than your, your next breath almost, is to lay your head on your pillow and close your eyes. <laughs> If I looked on social media, I would feel envious of people who still had choices in their lives. People who could sleep when they wanted to, go to the store when they wanted to, wash their hair when they wanted to, and I would miss my old life. And it made me want to run away sometimes, which made me scared that I did not love my baby and that if anyone heard these thoughts, they would want to take my baby away. But I did and do love my baby more than I ever could have imagined. I just didn't know that the adjustment to motherhood would involve grieving your old life. I felt so wrecked with anxiety and guilt, I couldn't, not, I couldn't stop crying sometimes. And I think to myself, is this what being a mother is going to be like forever? It, it's such a bizarre dichotomous experience, but it's completely normal to feel as a new mother. You're completely exhausted, but you miss them when they go to bed. You miss the freedom you had before, but you also want them around all the time. You need a break, but you also don't want to miss even one of their smiles. The roller coaster of emotions is ever present those first few weeks, and honestly, those first few months, I would say. And I wish this Jasmine could have told three weeks postpartum Jasmine that it's going to get better very quickly. I used to only feel okay when she was finally sleeping because that meant I could sleep but now that she's sleeping better and I'm sleeping better I actually look forward to waking her up in the morning which is crazy to me now because in the beginning I only wanted her to sleep because her waking up meant having to breastfeed her and feeling like a complete pain failure for not being able to figure out how to make breastfeeding painless which is how it should be so yeah the adjustment. This is going to sound ridiculous, but I didn't really properly anticipate having a child until it literally was time for me to push in the hospital. Before my midwife told me that it was time to push, me actually taking care of a baby was more of a thing that will happen in the future, but not right now, so it's okay to not worry about it yet. And then when my midwife said it was time to push, I officially acknowledged that I was going to not only have a baby, but I was going to become a mother, which obviously go hand in hand, but I just didn't think about my role as the mother as much prior to that moment. I just thought about how great it was going to be to have a cute, precious little baby and not the fact that I'm going to be responsible for keeping a little delicate person alive and literally do everything for the baby down to helping her fart. I didn't properly anticipate this, but as soon as the baby comes, you don't really belong to yourself anymore. You're not in charge of really what you do anymore. The word choice is not really in your vocabulary anymore. And that dramatic change occurs from one moment to the next. Your life now is baby and that's not a bad thing in fact it's a wonderful thing because you really do love your babies so so much and you can't get enough of them in a way but also you can it's really weird <laughs> but i was not properly prepared for the ginormous immediate adjustment you also very well may experience what's labeled as baby blues which is essentially a short depression after you give birth where you just feel down because of hormonal shifts and the huge adjustment it should pass within a few days or weeks it is different from postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety which i was also not prepared for i thought that was just how i was going to feel my new baseline of being, but thankfully it was not. Something else that surprised me was the intense bond I felt immediately with my baby in the hospital. Sort of 
petered out within a few days. Not the love I had for her, but the bond, the connection, the need to be near her. I felt more bonded after doing a lot of skin to skin and breastfeeding, but I was surprised by that as well. In the hospital, if someone took her out of my arms to weigh her or do a test, I would literally ache and start crying immediately. But after I got home, I would definitely miss her if she was sleeping in another room, but I wouldn't be moved to tears. I'm assuming the tears were from the intense hormonal response I had after giving birth. Personally, it took me about four weeks until I stopped feeling incredibly overwhelmed and saddened by my new set of responsibilities. By about four weeks, I probably bonded with my baby, I knew more or less what to do and what to expect during the day and night, and I was feeling better physically. But those first three to four weeks are honestly hellish. You feel isolated, you feel alone, and as the mother, even though you're completely new at this, you're sort of expected to know what to do and people come to you with questions about how to take care of the baby so that you can sleep, but you don't really know the answers and it's so overwhelming and you feel guilty for not knowing the answers, but this time will pass quickly, I assure you. You'll get the hang of it, I promise. When you're up late with a crying, inconsolable baby, please repeat to yourself that your baby will actually fall asleep eventually and you will be able to sleep eventually too. And also think of all the other mothers that are also up with their babies at the exact same time. It's a very comforting thought to know that you're not going through it alone. There are other women nearby who are just as exhausted, feeling everything you're feeling up for the fifth time that night feeding their baby too. And all of you will one day soon sleep through the night and be rested again. It's all temporary. Postpartum psychosis, rage, anxiety, and sleep deprivation. One thing that many people do actually warn new mothers about is the inevitable crushing sleep deprivation. And in my naivete, I assumed it just meant that I'll be often tired, but that is not what I experienced. The sleep deprivation during the first six to eight weeks when your baby wakes up every two to three hours to eat hurts. It makes everything hurt. It makes you anxious, hostile, depressed, emotionally numb. And at a certain point, I don't necessarily want to admit this, but I think it's important to talk about. I actually wanted to hurt myself just so that I could be admitted into a hospital so that I could get hospital grade drugs for the postpartum and nipple pain and a break from taking care of my baby and a really good reason to stop breastfeeding because breastfeeding again is so much more difficult than I thought to but I'll talk about that more in a bit. If you don't get adequate sleep meaning at least about six broken hours of sleep within a 24-hour period according to my midwife you're at a bigger risk for postpartum depression and postpartum rage and postpartum psychosis. I thankfully am not depressed but I did I think experience moments of postpartum psychosis and rage. There were times when the baby woke up just after I fell asleep and even though it wasn't her fault, I just felt so angry. Angry that I couldn't rest, angry that I couldn't get a break, so angry that I would have to ask someone to hold her or take care of her while I composed myself. And then I would sometimes experience some psychosis, meaning that I would have an intense urge to run away and or hurt myself. The lack of sleep also sort of sucked all the joy out of being a mother. If I was really, really tired, I would simply feel obligated to take care of her instead of taking care of for out of love, which was so discouraging. But when I actually had adequate sleep, I actually enjoyed taking care of her and I would experience the fuzzy motherly love that people talk about. So you're just not yourself when you're sleep deprived. You're a numb, anxious, hostile version of yourself who doesn't really care about anything except sleep. And then you feel guilty for not enjoying your baby. It's really difficult. How I began to fix this was I made a strong effort to sleep when she sleeps between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m., which is her bedtime. And then during the day, I'd get things done. So in those 12 hours, I'd actually get an adequate amount of sleep, enough to not feel painfully sleep deprived. Still tired, but not tired enough that I would experience rage, numbness, and an intrusive thoughts. What also helps is the thought that there are other women going through the exact same thing you are at the exact same time. Women who are also up at 4 a.m. completely tired, feeling lonely and isolated, but doing it all for their baby. The thought that you're not alone really helps. It's a very comforting thought. And if you ever feel too tired to even lift your head up, too tired to be functional or rational, 
please ask for help. As new mothers, we often feel the urge to do it all because we have the milkers and no one can do it as good as mommy, but not asking for help will most likely spiral you into literal insanity. So please, please ask for help. You're no less of a good mother for needing a break whatsoever. You need to take care of yourself to take care of your baby. Breastfeeding. Being your baby's only source of nourishment and being the only person who can soothe your baby is unsurprisingly very stressful and in the first couple of weeks at least it very well may hurt a lot because you and your baby are still figuring it out. A newborn suckle is also seven times more powerful than an adult's and you do feel it. And getting your baby to latch onto your breast properly is often not just as easy as plopping your baby's mouth onto your boob. There's an entire, it's an entire thing. It's like an entire subject to learn. There is so much you need to learn about positioning and proper latching. I, I read this book about breastfeeding front to back which is very comprehensive and I still needed hands-on support from my midwives, nurses, and lactation consultants. And it still didn't work for a long time. And after a month of trying to breastfeed and literally hundreds of attempts and it hurting basically every single time, I decided to exclusively pump instead and give my baby my milk through a bottle. And it is twice the amount of work, so I definitely recommend breastfeeding instead of pumping. But I literally began to get scared of my baby. Every time that she would wake up to eat, I would wince and I would loathe being awake because I just knew I'd be in pain the entire time and I was sick of feeling like a failure every time that breastfeeding her would hurt. So pumping did save our breast milk journey and I'm grateful for that. However, I still recommend breastfeeding over pumping if you can make it work because pumping is really, really overstimulating and all of the bottle washing and the pumping parts is overwhelming and a lot of work. So if you can make breastfeeding work instead, I would recommend it. But you know what? If pumping is way too physically stimulating and it makes you devastatingly anxious, if feeding your baby your milk all around makes you miserable and there's no relief in sight, your baby will still be just fine on formula. As mothers, we're expected to optimize every single aspect of our children's life at every cost and yes being a mother takes a lot of sacrifice and that's to be expected but you also need to be mentally well adjusted and take care of yourself properly to take care of your baby so if lactation is not working for you and you feel as though you would take care of your baby and yourself and even bond better with your baby with formula please do not feel guilty and make the best decision for yourself and your family. Formula is not poison, it's heavily regulated and your baby will be more than fine on formula. Breast milk is superior in terms of nutrition and immunity, but you need to not be wrecked with anxiety or depression more than, than your baby needs breast milk. But if you can make breastfeeding work, please make sure to eat a lot. I was not eating enough and it prevented me from being able to sleep even when I had the chance to sleep. Under eating drastically reduces quality of sleep and with breastfeeding you need about three to 500 more calories extra and you needed to drink a lot more water as well. Producing breast milk takes more energy than it takes to pump your own heart. So please eat enough while you're breastfeeding. Postpartum body image. I think a lot of women, regardless of how unproductive it is, look at their body right after they give birth. For the first time in nine months, you don't have another human inside of you and you want to look at the aftermath. And I personally just couldn't resist. And when I looked in the mirror at the hospital, I had a hard time recognizing myself. I still looked pregnant, my belly was all darkened, I noticed new stretch marks that I hadn't noticed before. My once modest bust was now busting out. I was picking my body apart inch by inch, already assembling a game plan in my head for how I was going to make myself look like how I looked before I got pregnant. The fact that I just grew my baby in my body didn't bring me much solace, especially at first. For the first time in nine months, my body was sort of my own again and I wanted to make it my own again. Within the first few weeks after giving birth, I actually was able to lose all the weight I had gained during pregnancy within the first 10 days postpartum, which surprised me, but it was mostly because I was not eating enough because I was not aware that you need to eat a lot more when you're breastfeeding. And all I wanted to do was sleep and not eat but 
even with losing the weight, I was still not happy with how I looked. I still looked different and I will always look different. Not looking like you were once pregnant is a rarity, even if you do lose all your pregnancy weight. There's of course nothing inherently wrong with wanting to eventually get in better shape, but I made it too much of a priority way too soon. What finally made me more okay with how my body looks now is when I asked myself, why would I want to erase all of the remnants of my pregnancy? Why would I not want to be reminded of my beautiful daughter and what my, my what, what the <laughs> Why would I not want to be reminded of my beautiful daughter and what my body is capable of every time that I look at it in the mirror? Reminding myself that love lived here helped me a lot. It's corny, but it's true. And now that I'm able to exercise again, my goal isn't to make myself not look like I've had a child. It's more than okay to look like you've had a child and having physical remnants of pregnancy can be a beautiful thing if you choose to look at it that way. It's really just a matter of, of perspective and focusing on what you have control over. If you have stretch marks, if you had a c-section, etc., you will now always have reminders of your new love and what your body is able to do. And that can be a great thing if you intentionally look at it that way. It also took you nine months to get where you are now, so you should give yourself at least nine months to settle back into your body. How to get through hard parts. Eat, hydrate, sleep, do not ignore your basic needs. Ask for help and accept help if people want to help you. Uh, be okay with messes and undone dishes if it means more rest. Find a way to laugh. When your baby is crying, put their mouth to your cheeks so that they're kind of like, Wah, 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 wah. I, it's it's hard to explain but it really helped me in those in those colicky days <laughs> um you can laugh at their farts laugh at their pooping i mean sometimes your baby will literally be pooping for like 10 minutes straight and it just keeps coming and coming and coming and it honestly is kind of funny if you choose to look at it that way <laughs> it'll get better when they sleep through the night please remember that they will sleep once again you just need to get through this first really difficult period. And finally, take a nice hot shower or bath and wash your hair when you feel really despondent. If you, right now, don't feel that attracted to your husband, that's okay, that's normal. Your libido kind of hits a ro rock bottom in postpartum and the coming months after being a new mother. It'll come back probably, <laughs> I'm hoping. It'll come back. It'll, it'll get better. You won't always be unattracted. It's not, it's not really a husband problem because you don't find yourself fantasizing about other men. It's just an, it's just a repulsion of intimacy. You just, you don't want to be touched. You don't want to be kissed. You don't want to be cuddled sometimes. It, if you were attracted to your husband before you gave birth and while, while you were pregnant, it's not your husband that's the problem it's just your home your hormones and the lack of sleep and the adjustment you will feel the way you once felt towards your husband just right now everything's different and your libido will get better eventually you just have to get through this really difficult part first well that is it for this video thank you so much for watching if you're a mother or want to be a mother please comment any thoughts down below although early motherhood is the most difficult thing i've ever ever experienced oh my gosh having a baby really is fantastic it resembles nothing about how you think it'll be but it is everything and more that you could have dreamed of if that's a cohesive statement it's nothing it's nothing how you thought it would be but it's everything and more that you dreamed of. So it's a lot more difficult than you think it'll be, but it's better than you thought the good parts were gonna be. I'm still tired. It's simultaneously the hardest thing ever and the best thing ever, so. And you're gonna grow into a much better person because of the suffering. Suffering is good for the soul. Remember that suffering is good for the soul. That'll help you also get through the hard parts. Remember, suffering is good for you. Anything else that I want to add? Overall, I would say that taking care of a baby is simple but not easy. Simple as in all you would need to do is cuddle your baby, change their diaper, clean them and feed them, keep them warm. You know, it's really, it's really straightforward, but the amount of time it takes, the amount of lack of, the, the lack of sleep, makes it hard but if your baby is healthy then it's not necessarily a lot of different things to do it's just a lot of time and effort to do these simple things 
if that makes sense. So yeah, I'd say taking care of a baby is simple and straightforward, but not easy. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of right now. If I think of anything else, I'll put it in the description box. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. And stay tuned for more from me, which will come soon. I'll be uploading again soon. Hopefully every week. Sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes I'll skip a week, but that's okay. <sighs> you can tell that this is not planned. You can tell that this is not a very, this is not a planned part of the video. Uh, yeah. So thank you for, for, for watching. Bye. <laughs> I gotta stop. I gotta stop now.